every small business owner dreams of getting a flood of traffic to their website. But the harsh reality is just because you build a great website doesn't mean those prospects are going to come. Well, I'm Melanie Benson Strick, and this is the Small Business Optimizer Show. And our guest this week is going to share with us some insider secrets about traffic and SEO that is going to give you a whole new way to optimize your online presence. And I want to just give you a little bit of a heads up. This show is all about how to replace overwhelm and good enough results by implementing really valuable strategies that are going to help you grow exponentially without working as hard. Uh, the whole point is we want to be able to do more of what we love. That's why we became entrepreneurs in the first place, right? So that's what we do here. And I love interviewing guests like Gary, who's coming on today, because you know, you know, I think we can learn so much from other people who are maybe a few steps ahead of us or really taken that idea of optimizing to heart and been able to accomplish some great results. So let me tell you a little bit about my friend Gary George. Gary is the owner and founder of Blazon Multimedia, a strategic marketing and creative services it's generated more than $48 million for its clients in the past five years. Now, notice he didn't say what his revenue was. He said what kind of results they're getting for their clients, which is really an important distinction. And they do this by implementing marketing systems that drive and convert targeted traffic, leads, sales, and prospects. And they're at blazonmultimedia.com. Now, just a little background on Gary. So I've been hearing about Gary for a really long time. He is the secret weapon of a good friend of mine named Jim, Jim Palmer. And Jim was raving about he's getting this done, he's doing this, he's got this off the ground, and he's getting traffic and blah, blah, blah. And so I meet Gary. And afterwards, uh, we met at this dinner that we all got together. And next thing I know, I get this really interesting package in the mail. And I couldn't figure out where I put it. I put, I saved it because it was so <laughs> cool. But I got this cool little package in the mail with this really fun little uh, collage with all these <laughs> little sayings and stuff from our night. And I thought, damn, these guys are clever. <laughs> <laughs> and so after that, you know, I just thought Gary was, was you know, ice cream and cake and candy and all that good stuff. So, um, Gary, thanks for coming on today and being willing to share some of the things that are working, not just for your clients, but for you too. Uh, thank you, Melanie. I appreciate you having me on. It's such a pleasure to be here. You got it. <laughs> so how did you get into this world? Because first of all, this is a highly competitive world. It is always changing. The terrain is up, it's down, it's over here. Google's got pandas and penguins and all kinds of stuff <laughs> that's probably throwing a monkey wrench into your business. But, you know, right. not only are you continuing to really thrive, but you seem to, you know, have a real love and passion for this work. What got oh, yeah. you into it? Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm a, I'm a marketing beast. I mean, I'm, I live, eat, sleep, and dream marketing all the time. So it is something that's just in me. I'm very excited about being able to um, do these cutting edge um, strategies, technologies, and at the same time, help out a lot of people with uh, just really growing their businesses. So it's a twofold thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So was there a catalyst that, that kind of got you into running your own business and picking this particular type of business? There was. I have a very, very uh, deep and long history, and I'll try to truncate <laughs> Give it. Give me the much. two or three minute version. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is not a mini series, Gary. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a one shot deal, my friend. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It was. I was born and bred for this. Actually, I mean, my father was a, a big engineer at Bell Laboratories, which was like the Silicon Valley of the East Coast back way back when IBM and everyone was owning the computer space i was privy in all of the huge when hard drives were size of closets and rooms and all the computer screens were just green and amber text back then um i was uh, privy to see a lot of that it got in my blood i guess because i became a tech head i love all of that i love the creative work i love the marketing side of things and they all kind of coincide with one another so it's the reason why all of our services intertwine with uh, each other from the web development to the design side of things to the mobile app side of things and then to the marketing side um they all converged and that's what it, it just kind of fell in my lap because i was always in the video i was always into i was a video director for many years i did uh, uh many things in the music industry um and then i transformed that into the business side of what i'm doing so it all came together um I, I i guess i could say by accident but i think it was meant to be and so uh that's where i am now so it sounds like by continuing to do what you love and what you're passionate about 
you found more and more clarity about how to build a business that was a one-stop shop. And my guess is, I'm just going to take a little guess here, is that as you saw more needs that your clients had, you probably decided to add more services, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. That was the key to it all. That's how the business transformed from the very beginning. It was all about clients' needs. Once I saw that and I did projects and they showed me other things that was missing, that's actually how I got into marketing. And people ask me that all the time. And I said, well, I used to market for myself all the time. I knew this stuff all the time, but I would only do it for myself. And I would push all of our creative services. And we were working with a lot of bigger companies back then, a lot of the bigger um, celebrity clients. We do a lot of the big rappers and artists, stuff like that. And their stuff, of course, got all over the place. And we loved it because our name was on it. It was everywhere. Then we started dealing with more small, medium-sized businesses. And we would do this great stuff for them the same way. And it would just sit and no one would ever see it. And that's when the light bulb went off. And I, it was kind of out of necessity. At the same time, I was like, man, we did this great work, but no one's seeing it because the client doesn't know how to market. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, I need to present and make this an option for them as well. So what would you say is the most prevalent problem that you solve for your clients? And give, me, give us a little background on how you do that. Mm, the most prevalent, there's a lot of them actually, but... Uh, <laughs> well, how does somebody say, know that Blazin Multimedia is the company that they need? Like, what is the thing that they're most wanting or most struggling with? Most of the time, it's them having a good product or service, but not knowing how to get the eyeballs on the product. Mm. The number one thing that we run into. They have something really great and fantastic, and when they tell me about it and I learn about it, I'm like, wow, this is so great. You should be, you know, doing gangbuster numbers. And... They're not because they're just sitting back and trying to figure out what, how to get it out there. So usually that's the biggest problem of everyone is they have something good, but they just don't realize what it takes to get it out in front of the people. And would you say it's more the online presence or do you do online and offline? We do both, but it's predominantly online. Most of the time it's online because that's the least expensive way that we're able to produce some solid and measurable results. That's the way we like, you know, uh, of course, with client uh, interaction, everybody, uh, uh, when we have measurable um, and it's black and white, it's, it's, it's a much easier case to say, look, Mr. Customer, you see what's happening here. You see the progression. Let's reinvest. Let's keep going. Let's go. And it gets them excited. And it finally convinced them that this really does work. And they really open their eyes and say, OK, let's let's make this happen. So I know a tiny bit about this world, and I know that there are a lot of mistakes that business owners are making that mm -hmm. are costing them leads, right? They're, they're, right. Um, they think they're doing the right things, maybe they built a pretty website, but like you said, that the problem they're having is there are no eyeballs on their offer, and it's just this pretty site that sits there with this really nice offer, and they go, huh, Okay, how come it's not doing anything? <laughs> right. Can you share the, some of the mistakes that you see people make that are causing that problem to exist in the first place? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question, actually. That's a roll into what I wanted to say before. But number one thing that we saw happening was clients would come to us and they would have spend every dollar they had on their website or their presence. They would never think about what happens afterwards. And that was the biggest, and still continues to be one of the biggest mistakes, but now we kind of push them and coach them and don't let them fall into the trap. That was kind of pro previous to when we were offering the services, but they would spend every dollar that they had and they would come in and then they would get to the end of the rainbow and say, oh, it's time for marketing. Did you think about what's your budget for marketing? And they say, I don't have any. I just spent 10,000 bucks to get this done and I'm done. Yeah. And that would be the biggest problem. They would spend every dime on their sites and they would have nothing in the kitty left for marketing. And if you really wanted to do, uh, you know, I would actually recommend any business to do it in reverse. Uh, spend less on the creative sides of what you need to do and more on the marketing side of what you need to do because that's going to give you the money to reinvest and eventually do the bang, zoom, pretty bells and whistles site that you really want to do. Um, but initially, it doesn't have to be that. And you can make a lot of money with something that's ugly or fairly pretty and uh, is still putting money in the bank. Yeah, so not having budget left over to drive the traffic to the site, okay? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So that's a big one. Any others that you see are really, really, like things that they think they're maybe doing right, but it's mm. actually working against them? Um, the second biggest problem that we always see is we see some clients who have tried to do marketing themselves. And 
they've done some things right and they done they they do some things wrong and predominantly what they're doing mostly all of the time is they're driving traffic to their website mm -hmm. instead of driving traffic to a landing page mm -hmm. and that is almost always across the board the first thing that we attack that's the reason why we rolled out a, an entire division of our company that was just specialized on landing pages because we kept doing marketing for everyone and we saw the disconnect and the difference in when we did it and we did the whole packaging the whole landing page and everything and the you know versus using something that the client already tried to had and did do it on a shoestring and actually we just learned and we convinced the client we said look you really think you're saving money but you're just losing it because every month you're losing all these conversions you're paying us to do the marketing but you could be converting double time if you just spent a little bit more up front to get a really great landing page that communicated the marketing message and kept people focused so that's the biggest thing people send them to sites you give them navigation. When we do landing pages, there's no navigation. There's no anything else. It's all about the, the, that client staying focused or your customer staying focused on one objective, and that's just to take the action. It's usually to fill out our form or pick up the phone and, and call it, uh, call us. Great. So yeah. um, that brought up a whole bunch of questions for me. I just want to do a couple of them. One of them, can you mm -hmm. explain what the distinction is between a website and a landing page and maybe even throw in a squeeze or an opt-in for the distinction because I get asked this question all the time what's the between a website and a landing page and we're used to that but if somebody's right. listening in and they're less familiar with this terminology they may not understand why this is so important right now that's that's a really good question too and something that definitely needs clarification for most uh, a website as most people know what a website is it's multiple pages and it has navigation home about us contact us it's all your corporate kind of presentation stuff that you put into your site a landing page is a focused sales virtual sales representative for you It is a one page not a site it's just one page and on that page there's not multiple things about all our services. So for example, Blazing Multimedia, we do SEO, PPC, social media, all this stuff, right? On our corporate site, you'll see and read about all that. But when we break it down on our different landing pages, we have one site for SEO, seojackrabbit.com. We have one site for PPC, ppcpipples.com. One site for landing. That is just that page that solely speaks to um, the product or service that we're offering and we give you no options. The more options you give a person, the less they, they're able to make the decision. So in those cases, we remove navigation on purpose. You go to these pages, landing pages, and you say, wow, well, where's the rest of the pages? There is none. We're, we're purposely doing that, so we say, there's nothing else to do. You want the service, fill the form out, or pick up the phone, and that's what it is. It's just one thing. Right, so what you're doing really is you're giving people one focus one option, one idea. And then the difference between that and a squeeze page that oftentimes mm -hmm. we refer to would be what? Now, squeeze page, now that, they kind of cross the, the borders of the lines because landing pages started to get a lot longer nowadays mm -hmm. than they used to be. Mm -hmm. They were very short and succinct back in the day. It would uh, didn't really require you to even scroll. But nowadays, landing pages are getting very long, and we're 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 rolling more information into it because we're okay. um, as bandwidth gets faster, as uh, resolutions of browsers get faster. It allows people to consume information a little bit more um, quickly. And so the squeeze pages back in the day were more of the long form style landing pages, where it was more like a virtual sales letter, um, something similar to what you would get in the mail, but it was just on online. And now we're kind of seeing them converge where right. it's almost the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And my understanding is a lot of times squeeze pages are also the same as an opt-in page where it's like the idea is to get them to, to give contact information to move on. Exactly. They all have one common goal, and that's give us your email address or call Good. it. Yeah. Good. So let's say somebody's got this problem. They don't have enough leads. They don't have enough traffic. They're really struggling. They spent all this money <laughs> and, you know, maybe they're even considering of calling Gary, but let's give them a head start today. Let's give them a little bit of a, a jump start and what they could do right away. What's, what's one technique or strategy you find is really valuable to start getting that traffic coming in and getting more traction with the investment they've already made? Uh, with the investment they already made, meaning in, the in site their website, they, yeah, in their website that they've done, yeah. One of the first things, that, well, if you're talking about a you know a website and they're coming in and they're saying, hey, I want to get more traffic. First thing that we're going to look at is two things actually. It's going to be whether we do SEO or pay, or PPC, which means pay per click. Um, for those who aren't familiar with pay per click, um, 
is basically on Google. When you go on Google, you do a search. There's ads at the top that you'll see that say sponsored ads, and there's some on the right-hand side that say sponsored ads. Those are people who are paying um, and agreeing to pay. Every time you click the ad, um, they're paying a certain percentage to Google. All right? Uh, so what we're normally doing, and I guess let me break it down, and SEO is more of a longer-term um, investment. It doesn't happen immediately. It's, it's not for short-term sales and short-term, you know, like I need I need a thousand people in this program this weekend kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. SEO is a long-term investment strategy. It's something that's going to pay you back hand over fist over time, over months and months and months as you start to do it and you grow, grow it out. PPC is more immediate because as soon as we turn it on, we agree to pay Google XYZ or we group, uh, agree to pay Facebook or Bing, wherever we're advertising, um, it's going to be there um, instantly. So for most of the clients, uh, depending on where they are financially and how, so, you know, how necessary it is for them to have enough to reinvest, that we will suggest them to uh, do a pay-per-click campaign before we might do SEO because we know that we're going to be able to make them some money back a little bit faster than we can with SEO. Okay. Um, SEO will ultimately make you more money over time but it won't make it back as fast as you can with pay-per-click. So right. that's it's a kind of a long-term investment in your, in your visibility. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And if you have the budget, of course, to do both, then we say definitely do both um, over top. And we have a lot of clients who say, um, and I was teaching this in one of our seminars the other day, and I said, well, we have one client who ranks number one for their keywords. We may rank all for most of their keywords in SEO, but yet we still do pay-per-click. And you'll see, and people say, why would you pay? Why would you bid on a word that you're already number one for? And it's because I tell them, I, well, you're going to get 70, 80 percent of people going to click on the organic search results. That's the regular ones that appear on the left. And you're going to get another 30 to 20 to 30 who click on those paid ads. Why are we going to just let go of that other 20 to 30 percent? Because I'm saying I already have 70. I don't want 30 more. No, nah, I want everything. So we go after both to make sure that we get as much as we can for our clients. You know, and I got to say, um, between Facebook ads and pay-per-click ads and all the different structures of ads out there, this is a place where you can throw a lot of money down the toilet if you don't know what you're doing. And I would have to say, mm -hmm. this is a place where a lot of people in the do-it-yourself mode is <laughs> are making a big mistake. That's why, <laughs> right. that's why, you know, I think people turn to experts like yourself because it's better to invest in somebody getting the right results rather than just throwing a bunch of money at something that you're trying to figure out on your own because you guys stay on top of what works. So it, Exactly, exactly. It's just like I, I say that all the time to people too. I say, oh, you're playing with sharks, especially on Google. You're playing with the sharpest pay-per-click masters in the world yeah. who sit there all day long and just – you know, do this and you're trying to be a business owner who does, you know, everything you do in a day and then spend 15 minutes to throw up some ads and think you're going to compete. It's like going on the court with Michael Jordan thinking you're going to beat him in one-on-one -on -one just because you played a couple games. It's not going to happen. You're going to lose your shirt. So we tell clients all the time, we say, you know, you, you, you will lose your shirt unless you, uh, you have some professionals behind you to really help you out. You know, Gary, I'm kind of getting this impression that you're saying something really powerful without having used these words yet. But it's the idea is that if you really want to have a big game in your business, you got to be willing to invest in your long game. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't know if you've yes. ever played golf, but in golf, yes. you, you know, 90% of, of the, the ability, from my opinion, to do well in golf is to, to master the long game, right? That's how you can right. shorten your strokes. <laughs> if you don't right. play golf, just imagine there is a very long amount of grass between <laughs> where you start and where you end up. And if you don't, if you, you know, if you're like me and you have to take a lot of short, you know, shorter, uh, you know, you have to, you swing and your ball doesn't go very far, it's going to take you a right. lot longer to get there and your points are much higher. And, yep. you know, mastering the ability to see that there is a long game here and not right. just focus on those short-term wins all the time is where a lot of the power comes in being able to dominate your online presence. And it's I think a totally. lot of people miss that. They think, oh, you know, what can I get for a hundred bucks this week? Or I've got 500 bucks and what am I, what can I do to make some, some traction happen right now? Or what's free that I can do? And that's all fine when you're getting started, but at a certain point you've got to switch strategies and you got to start investing in the long game. Absolutely. That's a great point, too. I mean, that's something that I preach all the time to people. And one example that I use is how I learned online marketing. I got very good at it was doing affiliate marketing. Um, affiliate marketing is super competitive. If people aren't familiar with that, is basically you can market anyone's product or service and they agree to give you a cut of every sale or they agree to a certain price that they'll give you for an opt in if someone fills out a form. 
And I was doing really, really well with ringtones at one point. And I saw that the ringtone vendors were charging people $10 for a ringtone sale. However, they would pay the affiliates $30. And I said, why would they pay us more than they're making off of this one, this thing here? And after a while, and I got more savvy and I understood what was going on, I realized that they have, were super smart and they knew the lifetime value of every single client that came through the door. They understood that that $30 wasn't anything because they were pro they're probably keeping these guys on for two years and making 240 bucks off of every $30 they agreed to pay us. Yes. So it was them looking at a long term and understanding what their numbers were that so much so that they were willing to cost for every new client who came in the door just because they knew the lifetime value of that client was going to far more exceed what they paid initially. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree. Well, speaking of the long vision and long <laughs> game, let's talk a little bit about you and your business because you've always been doing this for a while. You've had some evolutions. You've had twists and turns. You're in a very volatile industry. <laughs> so I <laughs> yes. can only imagine with every Google <laughs> shift, you know, your business has a shift as well. But right. you know, what would you say is one of the biggest challenges that you face as a business owner today? Well, I have several actually, and I'm always fighting and battling on all of them all the time. And I use my, my great talented coaches like yourself and Jim and everyone else to give me great information, charge me up and to say, all right, I got to, I got to stay focused. I got to stay focused. But that's one of my biggest things is really, um, is the focus. You know, I say that all the time because we do so many different things and I enjoy doing all the different things that I'm jumping here, I'm jumping here, I'm jumping there. And I do a lot of it just out of the love of it, you know, not so much for the uh, monetary compensation, but sometimes you got to look at that bottom line and say, wait a minute, I need to be focused a little bit more on some of these activities that are going to bring me the largest profitability. It's something I preach to my clients all the time. As soon as they walk in the door, it's the first question I ask. I say, what's your most profitable thing? Tell me what's the most in demand. What thing do you think you could expand out that you haven't done the most with? And then we attack those things. And so those are the things that I preach all the time that I don't do as much for myself because mm -hmm. I'm having fun. You know, right. I have the time. I'm jumping here. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But at the same time, I do need to remain. I do need to stay focused and uh, really boost up my bottom line. So that's one of the biggest things in my business that I would say um, is a challenge for me. I would say a second thing that's very challenging um, is, uh, like you said, because it's changed so rapidly in this. I define and I put together, I'm really the one who puts together all of the systems for all my teams. And uh, it requires me to learn a lot of information. And then I distill it down. I use my Camtasia, which I love all the time. I'm always recording all my video tutorials for my teams. And I'm saying, okay, this is how you do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Uh, I get a great system down. It takes me a long time to mastermind and think it all out. And then Google changes its algorithm or something goes on in the pay-per-click world or something happens. And then I got to go back in, restudy. <laughs> <laughs> Reshift, yeah, all over again. And it's like, man, I had that down, we were rolling. So it's 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 always like, you know, we're we're when it's when I when when we get the system down, we gotta run as fast as we can and capitalize on it while we have a good system because we know that it's change again. So that part of it I don't like as much, but it's part of the game and it's the reason why we, you know, we have an invaluable service. Right. Right. Well <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say that's you know, obviously a real benefit of having someone like you as the person who handles this is you don't have to keep up with it yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I never could. I was like, oh my God, it's way too much to learn. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that really, that really helps out a lot. So you mentioned one of my favorite words, which was team. So I assume there's no way you could run this amazing service that you have all, all on your own, but you, you do have a team and you use a, you leverage the power of other people's talent and time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That is the key to it all. I would never be able to do all of the stuff that I do without having that. You mastermind it out. You make sure you're the Voltron ahead of the robot. But at the end of the day, the execution has to happen from uh, the others within the team. And I've got a lot of guys. I've been in business 16 years. I probably got about 22 people working for me all over the world and here in our office as well. So um, I'm constantly, constantly looking for great new talent. And a lot of my people have, have worked for me 10 plus years. I mean, they've been long, long term, you know, uh, they're dedicated. They love it. I treat them really well. They're part of the family. And, um, and that's what really helps your business become, you know, something that you love to do and something that, you know, uh, everyone loves to work for you for because they can feel it, you know? 
Yeah, I love it. So uh, along this path uh, that you've had all these twists and turns, would you say there was a real game changing or aha moment, something that you learned that really made a huge significant difference in your ability to create the kind of success you have right now? Hmm. I think that the biggest aha moment that I had um, was creating fully done for you services. That is when uh, okay. that's that's where the light bulb went off for me. I, before we would always do pieces of a project and we would allow the customer and things like that. And I saw that become a big bottleneck for us. And where I first recognized it was with web design and web development. And we would always get people's sites done and they would rush us to get it all done. And then we would get it done and then it would take them forever to write the copy for the site because they wouldn't have it together. But they would rush us to get to that point and then we'd be waiting four more months before they even get the copy to make the site live. So I said, you know what, we need to do everything for people because these you know, business owners, we're all too busy. We think we want to do it. We think we're going to do it. But you just got too much in it. Before you know it, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock's here and you're out the door. Um, and so we started to present. Hey, Mr. Customer, you know what? You don't have to do that. We'll do everything for you. And I saw the difference in the relief in so many of the clients say, really, I don't have to do this? No. Cut a check for us. We'll take care of everything. Do what you do. It will be done, finished. And I thought I was going to see more resistance because of the higher pricing that we had to roll into developing that. And it was just the opposite. It, it really took off. A lot of our services um, people were just like, I want that one. I want that package. And we would offer other ones, you know, options. And I just completely saw the difference of offering done for you services, complete turnkey stuff. Everyone wanted it. So instead of being afraid to raise your prices, which mo many people do, and I think it holds them back. You know, you're afraid, you know, you, you hear that, that there's problems in the market or that people are trying to save money and you listen to what people say. You trusted that by creating a a really valuable service that actually will generate a great result and mm -hmm. priced it properly so mm -hmm. that you could actually be a successful business. <laughs> exactly. <not> by, <laughs> right. That you actually got more business. Exactly. It really, really took off. And it took off so much. So at one point, uh, specifically with our landing page designs, that's when we had first launched it about four years ago. Um, and the flow of work just started coming so much that I actually said, I got to slow this down. We're too inundated. How can I slow it? I said, let me raise the price some more. And I raised the price some more. I, I think I added about 40% markup, 40 or 50% markup. And to my surprise, it actually did the opposite. It sped it up more. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this is crazy. You know, and it was the first revelation of saying, don't be afraid to adjust your pricing. Yeah. If it's something that's really good and people need it and you're really doing a service that's great, don't be afraid to, to raise the price. And it really taught me a great lesson. I'm so glad you shared that. Cause I, again, if some people are afraid to do that and you're basically demonstrating that in the right situations, it actually is the right thing to do. And it has a win-win-win outcome. Exactly, exactly. You know, Gary, you have so much wisdom in the marketing side, but my guess is you actually have a lot of wisdom as a business owner because, you know, you're not new to this rodeo. <laughs> you've been yeah. doing this a while. You, you've seen a lot of things. I, I want to just ask, ask something kind of out of the box here. Like, if you could look back on all the things that you've learned over the years and, and give somebody one piece of wisdom who's mm -hmm. maybe not been able to turn their service business into a, the level of success that you have, Mm -hmm. What's one piece of wisdom you might say to someone that might give them the courage and the, the conviction to keep going? Right, right. Um, I would definitely say flexibility. Flexibility mm -hmm. is the key. And the reason that you've seen what I said about our services initially, it started with video production, web design, graphic design, billboards, this, that, marketing, it all transitioned because I was flexible with uh, listening to the market. I was listening to what my clients said they needed and I wasn't just leaving money on the table when I could actually perform some of the services that I know they needed. It was right in line and it was a linear thing for us to say, oh, well, you need this. Well, we also do this. What are you going to do next? You're going to need to market. You're going to need this. And I just started to line them all up and that became a full ecosystem of, of, of services for my clients that they just said, this is simple. And once you have a relationship with your client, that's the they trust you. You're the one they want to do the business with. They'll they'll prefer to give it to you even at a higher cost than dealing with someone that they don't know. 
So I learned to harness my existing relationships, be very flexible, listen to what my clients want, adjust uh, uh, and adjust things to fit their needs. And that's really what I think I would say to anybody who's struggling in their business. Um, you know, just just put your ear to the ground and really be attentive to what's at what what the needs are. That is such great wisdom. And, and you know what what I know you're explaining here is that you went after the law of client penetration rather than the law of add a lot of volume. You know, it's like instead of mm -hmm. trying to go after having millions of clients, you went after let's offer more to the clients. We've already built a relationship with that trust us and we know they need other things. And that's just a different strategy, but it's also a very, uh, what I would say, an optimized strategy for success right. in the service business. Oh, yeah. And it's the 80-20 rule as well. I mean, I also learned that that 20% of your clients that are going to bring the bulk of the revenue, mm -hmm. that that is where your focus should absolutely be. And I started to just do that, and I saw a difference in my business big time. I just focused, and it, it was less headache for me as well. And what I learned is all the clients who were a headache and gave us problems and put us through the ringer were always those ones who weren't as seasoned. They didn't have the budget. They didn't have the money. They were a pain. They they take up so much of your time and I learned I said all this time I'm spending with them and my good clients who pay me 10 times that amount I take one tenth of the time they understand the value they're much easier to deal with they're further along in their business they've been through the bumpy roads up and down so they're not you know drilling me about every little thing they understand right. it and it was just so much easier and I just said you know what from now on that's what I need to do is get rid of you know, it's tempting. And I was just talking to another one of my uh, friend who was a business owner, and he was saying, man, it's so hard for me to, to say no to clients. And I said, yeah, that is the biggest thing that will help you grow is saying no to the clients that are not your ideal target so market. True. So true. So, you know, in my experience, there, you can help everybody. You know, there's a lot of people you yeah. can help. But when you're saying people that it's not the great fit and you got that little feeling inside and you, you mm -hmm. let them in anyway, it right. just becomes a time suck. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and you kill it. You kill yeah. yourself and you kill your profits because you're spending all this time and it's stressing you out and yeah. it's just making the business bad overall. So yeah. I try to do it. I'm still I still have a couple of bad habits every now and then. What? You know, I think come on. I think I could no. I think I could pull someone in. I think they have potential. <laughs> I'm like, come on, I could teach them, you know, yeah. and you get to a point and you're like, Oh man, this this guy's Why never gonna do that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you do. You sometimes you just want to help people as a human. You yeah. try, yeah. but you have to draw the line sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I love that. You know, I think boundaries are a really underused but extraordinarily powerful way to get more uh, productivity out of yourself. So. Good Absolutely. for you, Gary. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I I love quotes and I love, you know, I have a lot of mantras I say to myself and I'm always curious uh -huh. when my guests come on, if there's some kind of quote or, you know, some mantra that you use for yourself or maybe even a little nugget of wisdom that helps keep you pumped up, inspired and, and on path. Hmm, man. I got a lot of those too. Let me think of a good one. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Man, that's that's a tough one. I, I, you caught me off guard with that one, Mel. <laughs> Let me the, the one, the one, the one that I, the one I use more so in life that I would say that helps me in business as well is whatever happened was meant to be. It happened for a reason. I use that one all the time. So I everything look, happens for a reason. Everything it, happens okay. for a reason. And if it's the bad thing, we all look at it as if it's so bad and it's this and that and the third. But at the same time it's probably exactly what you needed at that time to take you to the next level. Yeah. So a lot of the things in my life that taught me lessons that I really thought was the most terrible thing when it was happening to me, you know, five, 10 years down the line, I look back at those things and I say, oh, I'm so glad that that occurred at that time in my yeah. life because that completely changed and put me on path of where I need to go. So yeah, that's it's like hindsight gives you this ability to go, oh, that was a blessing where in the moment you're like, this is horrible. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's I like, love why that. Be? <laughs> yeah, it's a perspective, you know, it's like being willing to have the perspective that this is happening for a reason. I might not know what it is right now, but if I can right. hold that space of something good is going to come out of this, it can help you move through some really tough times probably without sinking the ship. Yeah, it really does. And I think it boils down to mindset. I mean, 
just with Napoleon Hill. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. And mm -hmm. it's all about mind power. If you sit there and consistently think positive thoughts, that is what's going to happen to you. If you think negative, you're going to get a bunch of negative. Mm -hmm. So no matter what happens, even if it's negative, if you continually think positive, you, it's going to accelerate the time that it takes you to move out of that negative space and get back into the positive realm. So I'm a big positive thinker. Yeah. So true. So yeah. what's coming up with Mr. Bright Shiny Object Syndrome, um, <laughs> <laughs> who is working on being more focused? What's, uh, right. what's next on your path that you're excited about? Oh, man, I got I got a bunch of stuff that I'm working on as well. That's been really, really going really well for me. Um, one of the big things is our mobile app division. I, I'm really nice. loving this side of things because it's it's a it's a piece it's a realm that no one's familiar with yet and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the wild wild west i feel like it's almost like back in the day when domain names came out and you know the people who were aware were snatching up the one word domains and now they're worth a couple million bucks everyone who owns a one word domain i feel the same way in the app uh, side of things and what's going on in the app store and how popular these apps are getting. I mean, the app store, I say, is the third largest search engine right now. It is so much activity going on and there's so many ways for small businesses to monetize, but they just don't understand the power of it. So one of, that's one of the big things that I, um, that I'm very excited about is the mobile app side of things. And if you want, I'll share two reasons why I'm so yeah, excited so about it. All right. Well, this is the big thing for all you business owners. I want to put you guys up on this because every business owner I present apps to, they say, well, what am I doing with it? Am I making this? And they don't really know what you can do, right? And right. I'm saying, listen, I'm going to give you the one biggest thing. I'm going to give you two biggest things of why you every business owner needs an app. Number one, like I said, the App Store is the third largest search engine in the world right now. People are searching on there the same way they're searching on Google and looking for these these wonderful apps to download to their, to their phones. Um, we do something and we figured out algorithms because of us doing SEO, we figured out how to manipulate the rankings in the app store. We call it ASEO nice. or app store SEO. So now we were able and what we have been doing is taking our clients apps and now we can rank an app for keywords that would have taken us five years on Google now takes us five days and we're ranking in the top three positions for these nice. keywords. So we, they are getting tons of traffic of people who would have never known about their product or service, who are stumbling upon their apps. They're completely engaged with you because inside the app, we're putting videos, podcasts, mm -hmm. all of the content, thought leadership stuff that we all business owners know that we need to do, educate your clients and give them what they want so they become your best clients. That is the key and we've been collecting and we're building our email list with these apps because we're making all of them log in to access the data. So we're getting tons and tons of opt-ins at a cost that's a fraction of what we're doing in public and everywhere else by having these apps in the app store. So that's the one thing I'm really excited about. The I second can see thing, why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a gold mine mm -hmm. and, and no one knows that it's there. And that's what I tell everybody. I say, us marketers, if you want to succeed, you want to play where people are confused. Whatever they're confused about and scared about, as a marketer, if you go and you master that, you're going to make so much money every single time. Oh, yeah. And that's what we're always doing, looking for where people are confused. Everyone's confused about these apps and how to use them and how to use them as a business owner. They think it's just for games or it's just for this, blah, blah, blah. So the second thing I'll tell you is this. Downloading app, when you have an app, I say this is the most important thing for everybody who has an app. You should get an app and get people to download your app. And they say, why? I said, because of something called push notifications. Yeah, so, so you're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I love this part yep. of it. Right? Push notifications. If you're not familiar and you have a phone, you probably have already seen them, especially if you have eBay or Amazon on your phone. They're always sending you hey this uh, eBay will send you one and say this product you were watching is about to expire or you you know blah 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 you got beat on this they push it to your phone it's the same as a text message it rings your phone it vibrates your phone it looks exactly like a text message so it's almost equivalent it's the same thing text messages now they did a study they said 97 percent of all text messages are read within the first 60 seconds of receipt and I was just blown away by that. I said, oh, my goodness, this is crazy. We can get into everyone's pocket and we can get to what other form of communication guarantees that someone's going to see your message. Not only guarantees they're going to see it, but they're going to see it within the next 60 seconds that you send it is ridiculous. I mean, all those marketers, we use email marketing, we use everything else. And we know that there's time lags and sometimes people aren't going to see it. But with this, 
guaranteed 97 percent of everyone's going to see it in 60 seconds and the kicker to it is this people can download your app and never even open your app and you can still push notifications so that is a killer right there. That's that's a reason that everybody should be like saying, I need an app on everybody's phone. I know, I'm sitting so, here going like, I'm going to have to build an app. It's <laughs> 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 great. I love it. That's such yeah. a great tip to leave us with. And something that I think, oh, I've heard a lot of people start to talk about it, but the way you're doing it is brilliant. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a two-fold. Very cool. I'm all inspired. I'm jacked up. I'm ready to build apps. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Gary, thanks so much for coming on today. And as you're listening in to this live with us or in the replay later, hey, I want to hear what is something that you're taking away from today and you think, wow, that was cool. Let's uh, let's hear from you what you can put into action. Share it on the blog right here if you're listening in on uh, iTunes or one of the other formats, head on over to MelanieBensonStrick.com forward slash podcast. Let us know what you are going to take away. All right. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. And Gary, thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, Melanie. Appreciate it.